Welcome to the Lost at Home podcast. Here are your hosts, Scott Bear and Jeremiah Johnson. Welcome to the Lost at Home podcast. My name is Scott. I'm Jeremiah. And we are back for episode 268. Oh yeah, you know, that's a special number and that is not really that special. Two times two times 67 for those of you primies out there. My primies. But wait, wait, my phonies are like, what about us? Antigua and Barbuda, area code is 268. That works, and um, I did a little bit of digging, and I think the most interesting thing I found about the number 268 is that in the year 268, Christians were expelled from the Roman army. Yeah, about uh, time. Don't ask, don't tell ended on that day. They're like, <laughs> everyone tell. <laughs> everyone tell. <laughs> everyone tell. Oh, oh, y'all like to fuck babies? Okay, you're out of the army. Yeah, that's yep. actually, a, that was a big deal back that then. Uh, around 268, uh, yeah. Christians were still considered a cult. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was before the old uh, Constantine. I mean, that was what the three hundreds or whatever, right? So yeah, and that was kind of where suddenly uh, they you know, Christianity came. became a big a big thing. Back in two sixty eight, people were like you're crazy, and then suddenly it's like, oh wait, you know, this whole talking snake thing just starts to make sense now because we're we're uh, in the olden days. Well, the difference between a cult and a religion is numbers. There's, so there's literally, numbers, also, they gained enough numbers by year three hundred to get out of cult status well, and into religion it's, status. It's, all, it's also like when Jesus was alive, it was probably more of a cult because part of being a cult is a a single uh a, like a singular leader who has direct access to to god who's essentially the leader whereas ultimately even though the pope is a big thing in like catholicism and christianity like has you know uh, uh Still priests kind of and stuff like that just it's just yeah it's just uh they, they they don't have like they don't have a single charismatic leader they also don't do like the the um the it's not as the fucking successions in a tent with exactly, some like yeah, peyote. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god! See, that would be a church I would fucking be all into. I guess you just literally with the uh, children, no, I, I that just, was children I of God. You just no, no, like pretty much. Yes, you yeah. just want to join children yeah, of God. Yeah, the children of God cult where they were just like you know when you're like or uh, on on Sean Riccio. Oh okay. Which which what's that one? The ones who did the sarin gas attacks. Oh okay. Yeah. Cool. The, they were a similar one. That's the guy who uh, was a singular cult leader who uh, well had sex with all the women. Yes. Um. Uh. Wanted to kill people with sarin gas to create the apocalypse. Yep. And also, you know, uh, a also, good start. also bathed and then had his followers collect the water in mason jars, jar it, and sell it to people for like $500 a jar. Well, we talked about uh, like the death uh, juice uh, yeah, water similar, or whatever similar. like that. Yeah. Um, if you ever want to uh, check out la- uh, last podcast in the, uh, on the left, left yeah. uh, they do a great, I think, three part series on, on, on Sean Rico. See, I, that, I, I've. I've Usually, what I do is I go. I actually like going to their website, even though I prefer listening to on the apps. I go to the website because they have they have them like sorted by the they type. type. They they type it out. You read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like the transcript. They're funnier in transcript <laughs> version. Um, the jokes really land. So I'll, I'll take a look at that because I thought I'd listened to almost all their cult ones, but I somehow I, I maybe I just didn't recognize that name as on, a cult. On Sean so, Rico, yeah. maybe the uh, single best cult episode they've ever done. Uh, that's well, you know, and, or and one, one they have not done an episode on yet that we did an episode on was the uh, that. Uh, Blood sex cult from uh, Ooh, Central America, yeah. or, yep. or, or it was South somewhere in America. Central America. Yeah, uh, which we we talked about like great movie, the woman, the woman for, leader, yeah. and they bled people, and yeah, oh yeah, that one was was like that still, was crazy. I think, and there's not much detail about it, so you have to like fill in a lot of information, which is probably why they haven't done a, a whole episode about it. Like all the detail is like in two paragraphs on Wikipedia, um, so there's not really a lot of detail on that. But yeah, uh, go cults. All right, um, big or small, doesn't yeah. matter if you have. Two million followers or yeah. ten. Yep. Yep. Y- y- you're go, you go you you go cults. <laughs> Actually, uh, I did I did go on a cult kick uh, not that long ago. I was watching a bunch of like cult documentaries and stuff. Oh, on, you just weren't walking around finding cults and kicking them. Oh, yeah, 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 a cult a cult kick. Oh, I wanted to test the you know, see which one I wanted to join. You know, and they were all like, "Oh, come over here." They had a little cult fair. You never want to join you know, a like cult. a job fair. You, you want to found a cult and run it. Well, exactly because you here's never the thing. want to join. Here's a the cult. thing: when you join a cult, first of all, you're found. Usually, they they find desperate people who need like a connection, and they love bomb you and make you feel special. Then you join, and then next thing you know, you know they. They, it's like Nexium sex cult or whatever like that where you're like oh Ooh. this isn't so great and um but the, the, unless you're running Nexium it, until yes. you get caught until you get caught then you get to have sex with 23 different women every night of the week yes exactly but then you get caught and they're like whoa you made him do it and yep. uh, it gets, oh, yeah, it no, gets he, muddy he, it gets he's, muddy he's, he's, it's, he's, uh, he's, not, he's a he's, dirt bag he's, he's not doing so well see, um, see how about how about having a benevolent cult where you get to fuck everyone in sight well, I think where that was just hurt, called. Where you don't hurt anyone. I think that was just called like the free love movement of like the '60s and stuff. That's when like they would have communes, hippie communes, and yeah, it was you know what just came like, out of that. Yeah, Charles Manson. 
Oh, that's the problem. Is like there was still like some aspects of that because guess what? Dirtbags are going to manipulate the people underneath. There's, yeah. there's, it's very. See, very why few. can't we have a very altruistic yet horny? I know cult leader who creates this great mythos. Yes, yeah, it also and doesn't... just literally wants to get his dick wet. Here, here's the thing that I noticed that was the running thread through because you were right. Yes, like uh, some charismatic cult leader who essentially rapes a bunch of people, but, but you know, sort of, but not really because yeah, they remove the to rape. Quote, just but a consensual the, cult of here's weirdness. The, the thread that uh, that actually made me turn the, the off after like like seeing three uh, different cult documentaries in a row, everyone was like, "Yeah," and then they fucked the kids, and it was seriously like everyone. That's the thing; they, they're just pedophiles Why is who that like step C. Yeah, yeah. Why do all you right, go step one? Make the cult. Fuck all the wives, now the kids. Wait, yeah. why? Wait, why go to leave, C? Leave C You're out. You're great at B. Yeah. You nailed it. Hey, here, literally. All, you can just live on B the whole time. You can, and you can live on it. B till you die. You, you, you can I be want, 90 years to, old and you'll still yes. have pussy. I want to be, I want to die under a pussy avalanche. That's how I want to die. That's how they would if they just didn't yeah. go to step C. They, they go to step C. That's also the one that gets you in the biggest trouble because people start taking notice when all of a sudden C the kids start C is for children, by the way. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. A is B for, is for a babes. Cult, B is for babes. C is for children. Yeah, yeah. See that how is, we definitely yeah. separated that, that children D, cannot D, be babes. And D is death, because you either die in jail or by the hands of a cultist who gets mad because you fuck their fucking kids. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do or, that. Or like, like children of God and whatever, where don't they just the allow kids. it to happen. Like, well, it's different. They need to be training. Anyway, we're not a cult podcast, Scott. What are we? Uh, we are a podcast where we take weird stories from the deep, dark depths of the internet. Which might have to be doing cults, yeah. A little alliteration. I like the alliteration. Also, a little alliteration. Ooh, Ooh that, that you was started, sexy, too. Started, oh, that is. That was a sexy tongue twister. Mm, I, mm. My, my mouth is happy uh, right now. Yeah. I saw, like, your, your <laughs> tongue Your tongue was dancing like a fucking ballet dancer. It touched my nose, and I don't know how that happened with yeah. sounds coming out, oh. but... I, I saw it, and it, it was serpentine at best. Yes. But we take those stories, and we describe them to you so that you get to hear them, because these are stories that you will not find on CNN, Fox News, or any other major news outlet. Then, as we describe them, we'd like to have a little bit of fun, and we twist them into new content, whether it be a TV show, a movie, a book, a comic book, a stand-up act. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, as long as it's new content, uh, we consider the show copywriting. So yeah. if someone wants to run with it, go for it, and we're not dicks. Uh, all we really want is credits. If you yeah. make a movie out of an idea yeah. of if ours, you like one of our ideas, just give us some bad. credits based on a story by and, and, Scott and Jerry. Yeah, it, it get, with get, our last get in, names. Get in touch with us and be like, hey, I've got this project I'm working on based on an idea you had on that we, podcast. We'd like we'll to be help. featured extras. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll we'll do some consulting work. We'll help. We'll do some Lucas. writing. I'll do Look. some. We'll do a voice. I can do. Like, listen to the. <laughs> Let's pull a George Lucas too and be like, we'd like three uh, percent of all merchandising. Yeah, and then guess what? Next thing you know, you're a fucking uh, Robert Downey Jr. making a hundred million dollars on end. That is that what happened. George Lucas, he asked for three percent on Star Wars. Now he's Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it shouldn't have happened yet. That would be a, that'd be a step up for uh, for George. I mean, Lucas. they both have like facial hair and yeah, are yeah. rich. One is one is considered like uh, you know a, a relatively like attractive sex symbol man, uh, and the other and is the George Lucas. Oh, oh, I was gonna say Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I figured like that would be the obvious like the the obvious joke is the way I told it. Uh, yours would have been, I guess, more of the uh, the real joke. You know, a joke. And mine wasn't actually. It works so, either way. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Are you happy? I'm happy that we. Hey, I'm happy that we explained it that way. Take yes. a moment wherever you're at. If you're in your car, at, at your place of work, jogging, uh, in your living room, bouncing your baby on your knee. Yeah. Just, just Not say. Too hard. Just, just say if you mean it. I'm happy. There. I, now that I, you I, weirded I out I, anyone around you. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like shaking your baby and just saying I'm happy. There's just some steel worker who right now just went, I'm happy. <laughs> and everyone around him just like welded a finger off because yeah, they're what? confused and scared. <laughs> Yeah, well, it must be nice to be all have all your fingers. But here's one of the other things we like to do on the show every once in a while. Sometimes we cover so many stories, and sometimes these stories pop back up in the news, and we need to give you a little update on some of this stuff. And that happened just this week with an old story we had from a past show about a woman who married a pirate ghost. And I don't. It sounds like things may that may not have been the best move. Yeah, we covered the story. Oh my god, about four months ago, if yeah. not a little oh. longer. And uh, well, they're breaking up. They're getting a divorce. Uh, moving on. No, actually, yeah. there's, there's a little bit more. Well, I mean, uh, my content. guess is it's because. An, I think we were joking when uh, they first got together and married, like, that this was going to happen because you don't marry a pirate ghost. Well, this is somebody who's clearly, like, used to just being like, oh, sail the high seas. Oh, there's and a reason be she a married pirate. Him. Yes. And it's from our previous story, and quote, she says, I told him I wasn't really cool with having casual sex with a spirit and wanted to make us a proper commitment oh, to each that's other. Right. You're like, oh, I'll well, marry you. Yes. Yeah. She said, I wanted the big traditional wedding with the white dress. It was very important to me. But they're getting divorced. Yeah. And now, quote, she says, I wish I never got married to him. I wish that I was a healthy person. I wish I was that healthy person that I was before I met him. 
Um, this is in her first interview since the announcement of the divorce. Yeah. Uh, she says, Jack, the name of the ghost, yep. uh, has turned what was a beautiful and loving th- relationship into something that is ugly. Now, uh, no, what would it be like? Just, you got like she caught ghost gonorrhea, and then it was like, well, uh, I well, clearly I didn't have ghost gonorrhea. So where did it come from, Jack? No, you must have had it the whole time. Who you've been sleeping with? He ghost sounds like Santa gonorrhea. Claus. Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, like Ghostbusters, but like they're against STDs. And, like they they just they just cure STDs with penicillin. Yeah. Ghost preventers. Yeah. How do you ghost STD preventers? I don't know. How do you? Oh, ghost has ST in it, so ghosted. Ghosted, which is funny because because G-H-O-S-T-D. because Both. technically she's ghosting him. Now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. All right. So uh, according to the Amanda, the woman who married the ghost, uh, she started being plagued with health issues once she married Jack. Yeah, and that deduced, ghost gonorrhea. It'll do that. Uh, well, she deduced that he was stealing or draining her energy and using her for his own selfish intentions. So currently, she is going to dissolve the marriage and is contemplating an exorcism to make sure it works. Yeah, she'll be like she'll find out she's anemic like two years down the line and comes crawling back. It just happens with every ghost, you know. Oh, it must be the ghost fault because he's a ghost and he's a pirate and he's three hundred years old. Must be he's the one draining my energy. So you Guess need what? what you need like for a new conto would be like a new Ghostbusters theme song, but about STDs. So it'd be ghosted. Like, Ghost go STD go, go, go STD. STD. Actually, how about how about the uh, Wait, no, like, the, like the uh, uh, ninja rap you know like go yeah. ninja like yeah. go STD go, go yeah go STD go, 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 go STD go you have to throw ghost in too go STD go you have to do that with ghost every other go yeah ghost STD go STD ghost go yeah you'd almost have to like work it around go STD ghost go STD go STD ghost yeah and then you roll into the thing where it's like who are you gonna call STD doctor busters just a doctor just a a doctor get some penicillin clears almost all of that up I think with the exception of like Herpes, which apparently three out of four people have. Not, not a ghost doctor. Most of them are from the 1800s. They're yeah. just going to make you do cocaine oh, yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, they're a lot. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're going to give you cocaine and a bag of leeches. So, <laughs> you, you, yeah. so that ghost gave you an STD, right? All right, well, just go do some cocaine about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just and fuck s- off. And stuff these leeches up your cunt. Call the day. <laughs> oh, sweet. The good old uh, bloodletting of those good old days. How do you stop having your period? Well, we made a, we made a dildo entirely out of leeches. Yeah, that's right. Just shove it up there and they'll suck the blood out. That's right. Uh, although, uh, I would like to point out to women that uh, there has been that warning we covered uh, to not stick a vacuum up your vagina to end your period But early. there has been no warning about making a dildo entirely out of a mass of writhing leeches. No, not yet. But we will get... we <laughs> shoving that up there to suck the I, blood out. I want to be... I just want to be these, like, gynecologists who, like, uh, you know, in these these... These people who have to issue these warnings generally are, you know, like OBGYNs and whatnot that generally, like, publish this stuff. Yeah, finally, like, oh, my God, really? We had to tell you not to stick uh, a dildo made of leeches that was produced by a ghost up inside of you? Okay, don't do that now, okay? So we can definitely get this trending to, to get people just enough. All you need is, like, two people to do it. One and warning should be, be no matter how many leeches are made up of that or, or compromised of that dildo or, yeah. Either way I say Comprises, it, it kind of makes yeah. sense. Comprise. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you throw it up in you, you're always going to come back with less leeches. Yeah. You're always <laughs> going to come back with less. Yeah. yeah. And that, it, that's why it's also a great market because yeah. people are always going to have to go to the uh, dildo repair shop to get more leeches yeah. slapped onto their dildo. Or you're going to have to buy some from Amazon because Amazon, I'm yeah. sure Amazon sells they're, leeches. They're, Does Amazon sell Are you literally leeches? Amazoning leeches? I just want to see. Uh, I'm going to say Amazoning because we do that a lot. Yeah. It's like Googling. I just want to see... Uh, Jared's oh, typing madly. See. Berkeley, Gulp, Alive, Jumbo Leech, Minnow Assortment, Bucket. Wait, leeches and minnows? How yeah. are you going to get live minnows if you get them both in a bucket? That's like, I want kittens and... Uh, what eats kittens? Rottweilers. I want a bucket of kittens and Rottweilers. <laughs> You're not getting kittens. Yeah. You're getting yeah. bloody yeah. Rottweilers. <laughs> <laughs> what's, a, what's a saucer marinating in? <laughs> uh, mostly kitten. <laughs> I'm just saying those don't sound like friends. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is. A, I mean, beliches and minnows like I like that they, they live that they, they live like in harmony. They live, they live in harmony. You know, down at the bottom <laughs> of ponds. I yeah, want well, baby alligators and kittens in a bucket. Will you mail that to me, Amazon? Well, you'll get a bucket of yeah, I guess I slightly bigger alligators. <laughs> <laughs> slightly bigger alligators surrounded by kitten mulch. It's all good. Have you? Uh, yeah, there's like reviews that are one star. Uh, no, we'll say four star. They go, well, I didn't really expect the kittens to arrive, but you know, I'm happy with the gators, and now I got these nice kitten bones to make wind chimes yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I call them kitten chimes. Kitten chimes, yeah. That's if a you best. listen quick, if you listen on a full moon, they meow instead of tinkle. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
You can bury the <laughs> you can bury the mush in a bury in your local pet cemetery and see what happens. Yeah, you never know. Well, I was actually gonna look at some of these. Uh, um, let's see, uh, total number of pieces in tum tub. Don't remember, but it is no good. <laughs> Like Seriously? Stuff. Yeah, so it's like this That's is the an this is in the FAQ. Total number of pieces in the tub? Don't remember, but it is no good. Anything else? Uh, does the container keep the smell in once it has been opened? Yes. Are those alive? No. They are junk. Uh, hose many individual leeches minnows typically come in the tub. My tub tub came with just five to seven leeches. The remainder were minnow style. Minnow style. Uh, I like I like also the thought of like there be a sex a, a sex uh Position called minnow style. Ooh, I don't know what minnow it would be. Style. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. I literally don't you know what fish fuck. I kind of think it's missionary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Aren't yeah. all their parts on the bottom? Oh no no! Don't fish lay eggs and then the male fertilizes them How like jerks off on the do eggs. Do fish fuck? I think it's like other sea animals, like where they lay a, a, a clutch of eggs and then the male just jerks off on them. I think so. Yeah, it's like definitely Which a clutch of gross. eggs. As well. It's like I'm pregnant. I have a fetus that's nine months in me. It's about to be born. Until you jerk off yeah. directly on it, because yeah. I know that is right because you're fertilizing the egg. It's true. Yeah, yeah. So that'd be like if your wife is exactly like, I want to get baby, pregnant, it's not, yeah, it's and like she, a baby just, she plops like a marble on the coffee table. Yeah, and then you, and you jerk off on it. it. You jerk off on the marble, yeah. and then then she sits on it like a hen. And one of these days, yeah. and then uh, uh, hopefully uh, five or six of them hatch, so at least one of them makes it to sea. I think. Yeah, I'm human the gestation now. is weird, but if you think about it. Less weird than doing that. Ma uh, yeah, mammals like makes a lot more sense. Like we yeah. we we have to go. The thing is that we still fertilize the egg. We just we just do it on the inside. We're like, this is fine. Yeah, we don't have to we don't have to make it a spectacle the, of it. It literally is the same thing. It's, it's just the, on yeah. the inside. Yeah. So like the little guy goes and goes. Yeah, oh, let me get that. But like uh, if it was on the outside, for some reason it would seem weirder if that a dude had to it, jerk would, off on. It also just be way less fun. That would make a great skit where someone like there's a party and someone sees like a clutch of like. A hot girl's eggs on the table. And goes, I'm gonna jerk off over those, and someone's like, "No, no, it's my girlfriend." Yeah, it's my girlfriend. And they fight over like yeah, a clutch yeah. of eggs. <laughs> like in the yeah. bite, it's like a cocaine mirror <laughs> yeah, exactly. and a beer, and, and they're like smashing each other's heads in yeah. the eggs. <laughs> uh, no, my babies, yeah. my potential babies. <laughs> All right, that would be like the equivalent of two guys fighting over fucking one girl. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have uh, that. That uh, is pretty much the end of the follow up, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Uh, she's getting divorced and it didn't work out because she's got ghost uh, hepatitis or something like that. Uh, but Scott, we're actually going to bring back a uh, an old segment we haven't done. I would say for probably a hundred episodes. Yep. I don't know if it's been that long, but probably that yep. long. It's been a while. Um, and the thing is, a lot of times we just roll these stories into web droppings, but there's a couple of uh, science-related stories. Two stories yes. that work perfectly together. In other words, a lot of times these are like a little less out there and extreme. You might actually learn something from yeah. these. So we try to like uh, roll these into something a little less obscure yeah. than web droppings. These are two tastes that taste great together, like peanut butter and EpiPens for me. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you can't eat the peanut butter and you might have an anaphylactic shock and suffocate in front of me. Do you have an epi pen on you? In my car. Okay, cool. Good to know. I want to get high on that epi. <laughs> Just stab yourself and run around the neighborhood oh, oh, screaming because yeah, yeah. it's like adrenaline, right? Basically, it's it's something. It's I don't epinephrine. Know. Yes, it's which epinephrine. is like adre yeah, adrenaline. Yeah. It gets you fucking jazzed. I've never done it, but uh, you know what? First time for everything. You guys want to do these epi pens I fell in this alley? You get <laughs> fucked up tonight. <laughs> oh, oh no, those were AIDS needles. <laughs> Literally, not even heroin needles. Just filled with AIDS. Yeah. They all are yeah. labeled. Straight AIDS. Not even HIV. Someone even took one of those to label maker guns. Yeah. <laughs> AIDS on the side. <laughs> that took somebody a lot of time. Yeah. There's definitely more time than I would expect. They literally didn't want someone to shoot up with them and get, like, AIDS. -ed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know how to are... verb that. Yeah. AIDS. -ed. AIDS. -ed. <laughs> AIDS. -ed. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're going to move into Blinded Me with Science. <laughs> All right, I love that jingle. All right, well, Jerry brought the first story about lemon power, which is something I think I learned in grade school, we but learned, never yes. on this scale. Not on this, not on the scale. Usually, we've definitely like worked with you know if you have something like a lemon, something like especially um, you know acidic. We've done it with like potatoes and stuff as well. You can you know generate power, and I, I remember uh, a grade school thing with uh, potatoes powering. Um, uh, like a light with, you know, essentially using it as a battery. Uh, but the, the, uh, Russian mechanics have actually taken this to the next level. First of all, I haven't actually gone to the YouTube channel, but this is, I, I do want to check this out. This is from a YouTube channel called Garage 54, um, which is all about never been tried over the top experiments um, that are like just bonkers. And this one specifically uh, is a bunch of Russian mechanics decided to create uh, enough power 
from a thousand lemons to actually start a car engine. And uh, apparently they succeeded. It sounds pretty damn cool. Um, so, uh, and I, I don't know if I'd ever actually done this with lemons. I just definitely was aware of it. And then, uh, and then what they've done is essentially made these, they've chopped a thousand lemons in half and got, I think it's about 0.96 volts from each lemon. So I don't know about you, Scott, but I was not aware that each lemon or half lemon uh, produced about 0.96 volts. I was not aware of that. I wasn't either, but I did know they you could were. make electricity. Yes, yeah. And if that's you were, about I would have been very far, surprised. Nope, and, that's and, about yeah. as far as my knowledge yes. went. Now, the, I did actually look a little deeper um, into this. Uh, just by that, I mean I literally went two more lines into the story and found that actually, ultimately, while it did, they were able to wire it up to produce electricity, it was not enough to get the engine started. So it was not quite enough uh, to power. How many was that again? Uh, they had a, a thousand, at almost almost a volt a piece. So you know, about a thousand volts, not quite. Of do we know how much the average starter uses for voltage? I have not. I wish I'd, I'd thought about that question before we started. It'd be I would funny if it was yeah. like ninety six thousand volts. Like you didn't even, not even <laughs> yeah, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like why'd you yeah. even try? It didn't even like choke. It just like shit itself when you tried yeah, to. Yeah, I was gonna say like I wonder if it was yeah. even within like. Uh, an acceptable range, which is my guess, because why go through the experiment? Yeah, my, my guess is they probably did like these things. These they, they, like they probably assumed one, give or take yes. point one. And my yeah. my assume my my, uh, my I guess they're, they probably assumed each one was about point nine six volts. I'm guessing some yeah. different factors means it's not going to get up that high yeah. in some cases, which means they probably worked on a bare minimum. Let's chop a thousand lemons in half. Anyway, I'm going to check out Garage 54. It sounds like a pretty dope um, dope thing. I don't know what else you can create uh, electricity from, but God damn it, boys and girls. Keep trying your crazy experiments. And um, uh, speaking of experiments, yes. uh, Jerry brought this next story to the table, and I love it. I freaking yes. love uh, well, it. Well, first of all, let's let's uh, let's just uh, talk about the the trend, which I actually am, I'm very big on. I actually like the fact that they're they're creating uh, plant based meats like the Impossible Burger and stuff that are supposedly. I still haven't had one of those. Yes, but I've heard they're uh, I, I, identical. I heard, I heard I heard those are, are really great, and even better are the uh, um, like Impossible uh, sausages because like really when, because apparently because here's the thing: sausage is just mashed up random parts of things so like as long as you get the texture right and you get the sizzle so, but the, it's it's covered in a different type of oil which is also uh more healthy than animal fat so you get the sizzle you get the smell and you get like and then it's just a casing and a, as long as the casing like pops and you got the jumbled up mash of whatever in in there it's gonna like really trick you into thinking it's a sausage so like because a lot of the sausage the herbs and spices and stuff in it so as long as you spice it up the same way so i've heard uh people who i know who are avid meat eaters who swear by the sausages especially. I've, I've not had yeah, the Impossible I mean, Burger yet, but I, I, I do like the fact that we're going into like a plant-based solution for the sake of, it doesn't mean you need to stop eating meat, it's just nice where you can cut down and that helps with a lot of things, everything from yeah. climate change to uh, and, and also as, just not uh, torturing animals. And as a cook, like sausages in particular, uh, pork if you just eat pork, it's like chicken. Yeah. It's pretty flavorless. It's a yeah. white meat well, yeah, that has so, almost so it's all, no flavor. So it's all about like how you yeah. jam it full of herbs and spices and yeah, stuff like sausage, that. Yeah, like pork doesn't taste like sausage and vice versa. It's just, it's flavors. It's like yes. a, a hot wing doesn't mean chicken tastes like hot wings. No, no, no. Yeah, same deal. Like, it's what you flavor it with. I had some Korean so. barbecue wings from your establishment. Yes, it's you delicious. did. Yes. You've got some of the best Korean barbecue sauce out there. I don't know. If oh, you, you really make like it, that? I don't know if you make it in house or you buy it out of a tube we or what. We do but, not. It's one yeah. of the few things we don't make. Yeah, but it is it is delicious. Although my favorite is your uh, your uh, your wet Cajun, which is uh, not 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 a wet Cajun That's man. Our dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I was trying to think of like a real Cajuny name. But I, I, I kept, for some reason, keep going to Mexican because I'm that much of an ignorant American where I have one racist Francois. stereotype. Uh, yeah. Francois? Francois, yeah, or, 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 Francois, we keep in the dungeon on the, the, the yeah. house, eh? Yeah. Oh, me my gira, me my el gira. He makes a gumbo, but well, we fuck him in the bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> bum hole gumbo, call it. Bum hole gumbo. You're right, you're right. Oh, 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 that's some good bum hole gumbo. You listen to them, Dr. John, and you know, I'll you know, get my alligator, whose name is also Francois Bum Hole Gumbo, <laughs> and uh, we just have a good old time. Huh? Anyway. We're uh, bearing the lead on this one. Uh, Arby's um, house has been an anti-meatless, uh, because like Burger King and all these other places, they're selling out of, and actually I would say Arby's probably is not doing themselves any favors, because places like Burger King uh, have been selling out of their impossible Whoppers and these impossible burgers and stuff like that, because people have been, they've been all the craze. Now, uh, Arby's has, has gone on record saying they will never serve essentially any meatless options like no matter what you try to get they're never going to sell, sell over a veggie burger anything for vegans uh, vegans uh, vegans or vegetarians do you know why it's called arby's no rb roast beef 
Oh yes, that's right. Yeah, that's Ooh. literally they, because it used to be all yeah. about like the sandwiches and stuff. Well, they're because yeah, it's known they're, as being the best roast beef place around, yeah. which I think is a weird claim for a fast food joint because the best roast beef you're going to get is not at a fast food. It's chain. not at a fast food. Chain. But here's the thing: the people who go to Arby's probably have never had better roast beef. I made roast beef yesterday at my work. I took prime rib. Yes. I rubbed it with balsamic glaze. And I like covered rare, it in, and then you I fucking... covered it in Montreal steak seasoning. Yes. And then I slow baked it. Yes. And then I thin sliced it. And yeah. it and was as long as, long as, as, long as it's beef, no more than like than like medium rare at, at most. It was rare to medium yeah. rare. And exactly. Yeah, that's what we so it's nice and red and like tender. And you, I, I just go to a fucking Shaw's. That's what we or make. If that's what we have in the Northeast. That's anyway. what we make our sandwiches with is uh, slow roasted ribeye coated in balsamic glaze and Montreal that's, steak seasoning. Yeah. Goddamn good. It really can't beat that. Goddamn good. But apparently Arby's think they can. Uh, but Arby's is also, they've gone the other way around, which I just thought was a hilarious trolling uh, in response to the uh, fake meat trend, uh, which is they are making uh, vegetables, vegetables, meat vegetables. Yes. I like um, it. Which is, it's not really meat, meat-based. Meat-based plants is what they're that? calling them. Meat-based. Yeah, it's yes. the most awkward yes. way to say <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Meat-edibles. <laughs> yeah, she touched meat Like, I just yeah, thought, exactly. it definitely sounds like you're touching private parts. Like, oh, oh meat like somebody kicks you in the begettables. Yeah, but yeah. I'm I like that actually better, start, actually, because yeah, it sounds almost like genitals. Oh, begettables. Uh, but anyway, so they're, uh, they're what they're calling meat-based plants is um, plant-shaped meat. It's not meat-based plants. Infused with the nutrients and colors of the vegetable, it is, though. Yes, which exactly. Is, which is good. Yes. Yeah. So it is science, and there's like a leafy green coming out of the top of their first. Um, I believe that's parsley. Yes, <laughs> a leafy green. Uh, was I wrong? <laughs> well, I just figured parsley was too exotic for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I actually didn't even notice it was uh, parsley, but now that you mentioned it, uh, yeah, it, it could very well, it's very well parsley. Um, but yes, it's a leafy green, also known as parsley. <laughs> we were both right, Scott. <laughs> now that we... You asshole. Oh, did you just edit me out of this? Did you edit out my last <laughs> comment just to be like, now we're both right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's no. parsley. Uh, nope, edit that out. Yep, yeah, nope. Well, no, uh, no, we, we, we are both right, Jeremiah. No, parsley is parsley <laughs> is a leafy green. Yes, yes. Did okay. you just edit me out again? <laughs> it's literally just gonna be me being like teaching you about parsley, yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna find you going, huh? Yeah, like so. You're like, oh, tell me more. I don't know if I can find that. I'm gonna spend hours no. scouring through old podcasts just to find one of you going, tell me more. Well, you had to have said that at one point. Here, here, clean sample. Okay, tell me more, sweet. I'm not going to do any of that, but now I've got it for next time. Nope. It's like uh, if you want something really, really bad, then someone offers it to you, and then you don't want it anymore. I, yeah. That's what I, I Yeah. Just, when all those all these models are always trying to have sex with me, <laughs> and I'm like, well, I wanted it before you were all floozy and around me, and now I'm not going to have sex with you, supermodel. Never happened, ever. Hear, hear, hear that, rapist? Uh, <laughs> you brought it You dark. stalked that girl down the street, and eventually she one day is going to turn around and be like, yeah, you want some of this? You, and you're you're like, like, no, no, you no. You ruined it for me. I wanted the, the whole experience, like yeah. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> You're, I'm guessing incels, you're, you know. I'm going oh, deep okay, nerd. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah going you're, you're, nerd. Going, you're going hard nerd. Dude. Going you you lost nerd. me. You you went by you you went past me and three point six parsecs or whatever the fuck his name was. Uh, yeah, like some, girl, name some guys like stalking a, a girl distance, on the street and like, breathing yeah, hard. Exactly. And she's, she turns uh, around real quick and she goes, "Oh, you're sexy. Oh, do you want to put your dick in me like a Quidditch broom?" Cool. And he goes, "I I can oh, I can that was my fantasy. Yeah. Now oh. I don't know. Yeah, I consent. Oh, well, I guess you ruined it for me. There you go. Everyone about to get raped. Just consent. Just Jesus no, Christ. don't share. You pretend. Said it. Pretend. <laughs> you just said it. Pretend to. Oh my God. I no. lost it over. Could share we? Says if you're about to get raped, just consent. If, if I added anything Still out, lose all interest if, and leave. If I added anything out, it's not leafy green. That's definitely not the worst thing I've said in this show now. <laughs> oh boy, did I top myself? Oh. Yeah. Uh, let's get to the vegetables. Did you, wait, did you just me to yourself? I don't know. Or what did I, I me to you? I think I fucked everything up so bad that there's not even, you that we need a new movement just for myself. We might need it's to edit the out Jeremiah, the last five minutes. It's called the Jeremiah Johnson movement, where me saying anything that would even be construed as that, which clearly you brought it to that. Yeah, we both committed many wrongs. Hashtag Johnson movements. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hashtag. Isn't that just yeah. Jer's? Dick moving, yeah, yeah, getting a little, yeah. get a little twitch, a little, little, little energy in it. Yeah, a little energy. It's like uh, when you almost, a... almost like a merit. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, the meat carrot. It's a meat carrot. Yes, it's called a merit. Um, God, I hope you delete like the last five minutes. Oh, it's it's all in, baby. I know. It's I gonna know. be too awkward to delete. And honestly, I don't want to spend that amount of time on this fucking show. <laughs> 
<laughs> the reason I like our dynamic is we get to just roll, and I get to like go we in. Just keep I going. punch it up. I put a little compression on there. I put a little like, and then I, you know I might chop a couple of like weird silences out or something like that. And when we have guests on, I, I do a lot it. more. The, 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 I like I just like uh, roll it into it. Put yeah, a couple no, no, of I things. Say boom, nothing. Boom, I'm, I'm biting boom. my tongue. Yeah, yeah, you should bite we, your tongue. We said some gross yeah. stuff. Oh, too bad because I wanted to bite somebody else's tongue, and then they let me. And then I was like, that's no fun. It tastes like a merit. Thank you. I was almost going to say that. We, uh, um, we think yes. alike. We think alike. We do. Horribly. And we should have been banned a long time ago. I, we might be. I think we've joked about being the first podcast that ever gets banned. Yeah. They're like, yeah, all those white nationalist podcasts. We can deal with those. But holy shit. Oh, Boss we, at Home podcast. We have listeners with good senses of humor. They have yeah. to have them. Yeah. So a merit is essentially a rolled up a bunch of uh, turkey, turkey, turkey uh, formed into the shape of a carrot in a bag and then sous vide. And then they add, well, while being sous vide, they add the... Uh, Basically, the juices of a carrot, which give it both yep. the color and the nutrition. Yep. The, 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 a lot of the vitamin A from the like, because which you normally would not necessarily get from. The, I don't. I don't the, think you get that from carrot teen. Ooh, carrot teens. I thought she was eighteen. It's I, a well. That a is that is carrot, a teen. A beta carrot teen. Oh, okay, wow. beta carrot. How about how about uh, that's beta, like a far side fine. joke for twenty nineteen <laughs> for a new audience. How about beta carrot preteen? And then like that's the problem. I thought she was a beta carrot teen. Yep. I'm, well, gonna, I mean, the I'm, teen I'm standing help. by the joke. The teen doesn't help the say. I know 18 and 19 is still teen. Exactly. But... So she, yeah, be like, and she, why do we? Yeah, go... I can't believe you. Uh, you fucked this beta carrot preteen. No, I thought she was a beta carrot teen. To be always f- eat your vegetables. Bing, bing, bing. The more you know, eat your vegetables. Ding, dong, ding. To be fair, oh, good, and eat your vegetables. not to dig more holes for ourselves. Oh. but the 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 consent age in 90 percent of the states is 16, not yeah, 18. Yeah, Vermont here. Yeah. yeah, a lot of places go with the uh. So if, but over state lines, you have to. It's the eighteen because that's a federal. Oh, age, the biggest yeah. thing is, uh, and I read this on a Reddit thread, and it was about someone's fucking sob story about almost going to jail, and it was funny to read. But they were uh, they were nineteen and had a seventeen year old girlfriend, and the relationship was fine because she's not under sixteen. Yeah. But she had sent him nudes, and that made him a pedophile. Was well, because it was uh, over state lines at that point, right? No, so no, within yeah. the same state. No, but I mean, like, Be- it's, no, but digitally, it's like considered like. Oh, like interstate Maybe or whatever. because it yeah. goes to the space and back. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Because, yeah, you can uh, you can have sex with someone down to 16 legally, but if they send you a photo of themselves naked, that's child porn because they're not yeah. 18 because the law is different yeah, for well, sex yeah, for, and porn. And, 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 and for porn, yes, yeah. Well, and not just porn, but like, yeah, the... the uh, oh, literally the, Yeah, porn. the images, yeah. Yeah, yeah the images. Like, it's porn. a weird porn, law, yeah. yeah. It's like, it is, yeah. It's like, yeah. we're well, going to hang out them. and get married someday. We're a nice Christian couple and, you know, we're, we're very yeah. wholesome. And then Here's one day she sends you a dirty pic and suddenly you're in jail. Yeah, you're like, hey, you should have just fucked her. Yeah. Like a real... Yeah. Teenager. You should yeah. never have accepted that nude pic from that seventeen year old girl. You should have just fucked her. Yeah. Yeah. What? Wait, this what? is <laughs> this is this is America? What? Yeah. Okay, fine, yes. But yeah, um, laws are weird, and carrots are, weird. are getting weirder. Uh, yes. Merit, I would love to eat. I honestly would like to know what it tastes like because carrot juice does here's, have here's, a very distinct it, flavor, yeah. and turkey has a, a lack of flavor except for the sodium. But because it has a lack of flavor, I think it could be injected with flavor substitutes that make it taste like something. Yeah. Uh, also, like every most of the places, like if you buy if you buy your turkey from like a supermarket and it's like. Like, it's like turkey and ham, like, and it's in a very specific shape, like round or whatever. That stuff has been smashed into a paste and then formed into a shape like that. Oh, generally, yeah. no generally tur- you're getting no turkey tur- roll. Yeah, when you, like buy, you, get, you get like real turkey yeah, breast or something. Yeah, turkey is technically gross. Yeah, yeah, because you get like the regular uh, turkey breast, like from uh, uh, you know Thanksgiving or something like that, and you have like the flaky turkey and all yeah. that. But usually they, they, they and they, bones. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah. Turkey so generally, they, they, they paste it. They they put it into a paste. They inject a shitload of water and because salt. it makes yeah, it's salt and preserved. And then they smash it together into a roll or a shape that looks turkeyish, yep. but not like a little actual turkey, which no, would no, be no. great. The, the round ball of deli turkey is almost the same size as an actual uncooked turkey. Yeah, yeah. Except one of them can be put on a slicer made to deli meat. The other one's gonna have sparks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of sparks over here. Oh, oh, there's a sparky turkey again. Ah, uh, yes. You know, a turkey's good when it sparks, eh? <laughs> Hear it. Yeah. All right. And honestly, well. you can get, if you know how to uh, deconstruct a whole turkey or a whole chicken, they are the best priced meats to buy because I, I, you can I, deconstruct them like a motherfucker. I, I've done so with uh, whole chickens. I've done the yeah. deboning and, and actually like taking everything yeah. apart. And actually when you do Why that... Why don't you make a fisting motion when you did that? Uh, I thought that's how you debone like, when people. When I take things apart, if I were to say that, it would be like, if I'm minding you with my hands, the listener's going to have to imagine this. 
Picture me just taking two Lego yes. blocks apart. I, yeah, and it looks like you're taking Lego blocks, blocks apart, but like delicately with the tips of your fingers. Well, I'm holding one Lego block while juggling several others in my palm below uh, that. Oh, that, yes. That tall, the, thin one. Yes, the Lego <laughs> dick and Lego balls, yes. <laughs> Who got that? Oh, oh, that Lego cum in my face has fucking blasted my eye out. Put an eye out with that Lego cum. Hey, do you remember the uh, Bop It? I do, of course. And do you remember bop the Rubik's? Smash and, it, twist it, And do you remember it. the Rubik's Cube? Yeah. And, uh, Rubik's, Dubik's, and smash it, cunt it. Do you remember the Magic A Ball? Uh, that one I definitely do. Like, yo, you're definitely going to die today. Yeah. So, a Bop It, Rubik's Cube, Magic A Ball that looks like a dick and balls. Fuck yeah. You hold the shaft, you combination twist the balls. If you get the right combination of colors where it lines up, it then tells you your fortune, and you also have and to like it, also it, jerk it, it off because yeah, it keeps saying like, "Twist it, yeah, jerk Bobby, me, yeah, twist yeah, it, yeah, yeah. jerk me." Yeah. Does that just slower, nothing else? Faster, faster, yeah, that's faster, just, yeah. slower. Yeah, Jaleel White does the voice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, when it, then, then, it, then it comes a he fortune needs a, he needs cookie work. fortune, and just kind of comes out like with one of those army men with the parachutes attached. Like he goes, and then he goes, did I do that? Did I do that? Yeah, because that's what uh, Urkel used to say when he premature ejaculated all over his uh, over his, his girlfriend. Magic Rubik, jer magic Rubik jerk it. Yeah, magic Rubik jerk it. Yeah, there you go. So we got our, our, you, our new content for that. Yeah, yeah perfect. And, and we're good. Yeah, so that's the Arby story. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't actually determined whether or not this was like... It's sort of like some viral marketing thing that was like a one-off thing, or if this is going to be something they actually serve somewhere. But regardless, they made it and posted a video about it. So at the very least, it is uh, social media fodder and marketing fodder. It, it, it exists. And good on you, Arby's, for your um, sort of trolling, but also you use science for this. Hence, Blinded Me With Science. That's the end of Blinded Me With Science, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for Blinded Me With Science. Keep very, blinded me with science. A very special Me Too edition. Yeah. Yeah, we got kind of harsh in that one. I almost yeah, we feel did. a little bad, but uh, it so was all maybe, good humor, maybe and we're, get, we're good people. Yeah, we're maybe, good people. Do you, do you think so things will get any better in web droppings? Uh, I think when we talk about these Nazis, it will. Web all right. So, we are going to get into the world of, of booze, and we're going to start with what I actually thought was a pretty... Amazing troll slash uh, uh, protest against this neo-Nazi music festival that happened in Germany. Um, let me actually find the exact. It's a far-right music festival in Germany. Uh, Trying to find the exact name. Um, so the the town of Ostritz in Saxony, and it is the Shield and Sword Festival or the Shield and Schwert Shield und Schwert Festival uh, in Germany. And what ended up happening is beforehand, they had decided, the, the town had voted to uh, ban alcohol sales during the uh, event because they, and, and also no alcohol dur like in the event itself. So they to were stop violence. Yeah, yeah, because they're like, neo Nazis are going to be fucking assholes anyway. Hey, big surprise. I guess what? I, I, I don't, the one, one group I do not feel bad about absolutely ostracizing is, uh, are the neo Nazis. And white supremacists. Yeah, yes. Uh, so they, they're, yes. Any, any of those, like, openly racist pieces of shit, uh, if you're closed racist behind closed doors, you know, you're also an asshole. But, um, these people who are celebrating this shit, they're like guaranteed to be like vile, nasty, violent people on um, on the inside. Anyway, um, so yep. I think there was about 600, <laughs> 600 people went to the festival on the first night, and over the uh, on the first day alone, the cops uh, confiscated eleven hundred and nine gallons, or over eleven hundred nine gallons, forty two hundred liters of beer from the white supremacists attending the event, um, and then another two hundred liters uh, was seized the next day, even though the uh, the attendance of the festival went down. Now that's fine. That's all, all well and good. The thing I love is how the community banded together ahead of time because they were like, well, the neo Nazis are just going to like pregame and shit. They're going to go to the local. Like, apparently, there's like one store in the town and they're going to go there. They're going to buy all this booze and they're going to fucking pregame and get wasted and go to this festival anyway. So, like, I think it was like a month or a week ahead of time, the whole uh, community banded together. Uh, first of all, they, uh, they threw some um, anti. Uh, Nazi protests, they like peace protests and things like that. Yeah. Um, some festivals celebrating like a hundred year anniversary of like a uh, soccer team, football team, um, things like that. But the other thing they did is all get together and go to that one 
supermarket and they bought literally every single bottle of beer and every piece of booze in the town. So by the time the Nazis showed up, even after the, all their shit got confiscated, 4,200 liters, they then would have to go out and try to find some more alcohol and like the fucking shelves were just bare. Because they were like... That is exactly, amazing yes, they, and, and awesome. Because they were like, listen, we, we, you know, free speech, whatever, like we, you know, we, these people are allowed to assemble, but we also want to make a point to show that our community does not, just because you're throwing your shit in our community, we can also protest and talk about and, and essentially dry you out because you're just going to be assholes and you're going to be violent without alcohol so let's not let you fucking like racist assholes get drunk so this was like a, a beautiful form of protest so we could do the same people. thing in the US for incels we could just go to every store and buy all the Doritos and Mountain Dew Mountain Dew video games and then also and also block their Steam accounts you yeah, know block all their yeah. Steam accounts oh my god well, actually Steam, yeah. Steam is great don't don't shit on Steam I would no, say no, no, what, no. what would be the but thing but they're definitely incels are like also very gamers uh, in, in, the, in the video game culture so, not all gamers are incels but all I, incels are gamers. Let's go that This might far. be a hot take, but I think most incels are, are Xbox players. <laughs> you're, uh, you're, you're, you're listening to uh, PS4 uh, players. Yeah, here, we're both uh, PS4 yeah. guys. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, and, and, I don't, and Nintendo I don't have, Switch. I don't have anything... Uh, well, here's the thing. Nintendo is... It, Nintendo, like, it hasn't been div divisive uh, very for like for a, a while. It used to be. It used to be Nintendo or Sega. But right? at one point, it was certainly divisive. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I, I think I, 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 I used to you say, say divisive. No, the thing is, I used to say divisive, but it's everybody pronounces it divisive. Oh, I yeah. like divisive better because well, I divide words are pronounced different ways. Because I divide things, so I would say divisive, right? But like I said it, but like I heard, I looked it up, and everybody I love says the Nintendo divisive. switches because the people who work on them have a high suicide rate. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just that they have nets outside of those corporations. Um, no, but to... I, I literally think that's like like every single uh, like gaming company. Yeah. If, if you've seen like the the gaming current, like people who oh, work yeah, like yeah. hundred hours a week and they burn out and they like and yeah, they, they're like yeah. Guess what? Yeah. Red Dead Redemption was probably uh, like responsible for just like hundred suicides. Just like Microsoft, they have their incel pits. <laughs> <laughs> well, got another incel for the pile. <laughs> yeah. Throw him in the pit. Out. Yeah. He just gave. He just jerked himself off so until he's dry. <laughs> It's yeah. just like a husk. It's like a uh, oh my it's god! Like a I'm trying to think of a movie where you can see like some like a horror movie where someone ended up as a husk and chair. Like all like the life oh, gets uh, sucked uh, out. Sleepwalker. Stephen King. Yeah, sleepwalkers. yeah. There we go. Yes, perfect. They pull the souls and everything out of them. They end up as husks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just have like an incel in, in like a gamer chair, and it's still yep. vibrating and like yep. dust is and, falling. Yep. yep. He's like, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, another incel for the pile. Yeah, dumb cummed himself to death. Yeah. <laughs> He's literally yeah. got one of those web dick suckers, and it's just connected to another dead incel across the country. <laughs> <laughs> they both were catfishing yeah. each other. Yeah. yeah, this was incel on incel violence. <laughs> incel in incel violence. In, yes. Incel and incel violence. Yeah, I, I, I. <laughs> We've seen it before. <laughs> And guess what? Nobody really done. Uh, nobody uh, really misses them. We lose more Microsoft employees this way. <laughs> oh God, it's true. It's Mo true. Most of them are pale, have uh, larger than normal eyes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, can uh, can yes, dick yes. can burrow <laughs> at so, a rate more than I, a blind uh, mole. And I, and I will say that you know, yes, probably for uh, the incels, uh, the. The video games are definitely not the culprits. In fact, they probably prevent them from being. It's actually like it's yeah, a nice distraction. Yeah. Well, I would say I would say get. Rid I would of say like, the internet's the, the worst. The problem is the social media. Yeah, like, the bubbles. internet's the because worst because they stay in their in their parents' basement, even though the parents have tried to uh, evict them multiple times, and, and they then they complain their parents. to each other, yeah. and then they get in these little bubbles where they all are like, "Me yeah. too," yeah. Oh but my God. the wrong kind of "Me too." Yeah, no, definitely the worst version of "Me too." God, if they yeah. had only grabbed "Me too" first. We'd have a whole different world right it now. It would be a di yeah, we're different. Yeah, would then be they'd have world. To, then they'd have to do what well, my joke. They'd have to do I as well. I as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't have the ring to it. Hashtag I as well. He'd be like, yeah, I was totally at the supermarket buying my uh, nine cans of beefaroni and uh, <laughs> my 20 packs of ramen. Oh, and he definitely, they definitely got those uh, Costco uh, fucking mac and cheese. Yeah. Remember the post-apocalyptic oh, yeah, the, yep, the, the yep. post bucket, five of, mac bucket and cheese. of mac and cheese, which are meant for like survivalists, but everybody, all the incels bought them and they're just sitting there spooning it out cold in their mom's yeah. basement. And they're like, I can't get a, a microwave big enough to put this whole thing in, so I'm just going to eat it cold. I threw all that in my cart and then I was just pushing it past this fucking wicked hot thought up on a ladder. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I fucking, I mean, you stick a finger in her jean ass. Like, you know, not a real ass, but like where her ass would be through her jeans. Got kicked out of the store, didn't yeah. get a bucket of mac and cheese. And then, you know what? And then you it got a buddy. It should be my right to stick yeah. my finger out because like. A jean because, ass. Because, because I'm apparently uh, incapable of having a conversation with anybody. Yeah. Uh, and assume that the reason uh, I can't get laid is not my own fault because I'm a sweaty. You, 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 you're more beefaroni than man. Yeah. 
And, and, you, and you then think a thousand it's, you miles think yeah. away, you got another one who's yeah. like whose username is Food for Thought T H O T. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Food for Thought. That is fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, and he's like, "Hey, dude, happened to me too today. Yeah. Same exact scenario: beefaroni, ramen, yeah. five go <laughs> bucket, and a bit of finger up a Jean girl's yeah. ass." You thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, we will strap on our AI fucking suck machines. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fuck them. Let's show each other what they're missing yeah, out yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll live stream this. Twitch it. <laughs> Twitch it. <laughs> yeah, we just saw like a, a, a I think it is it a is it a murder suicide? <laughs> I don't know. Is it du- a double yeah. double suicide by cum drain? You got you got at thought police and at food for thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both jerking each other off about yeah. their... Yeah. And it's both like live twitched of all their life getting sucked out of them as these AI robot suck machines suck every last living bit of uh, cum and life out of them. Hey, Microsoft, if you're listening, these are your employees. These are and your the employees. easiest way to replace them would to have the machine first suck and then reverse blow into them nanobots that turn them into working slaves. Ah, yes, the, the incel it, slave it, it, movement. It, yes, like the incel dies from jerking off too much, turns into a husk, the machine then reverses, yeah. fills the sperm with nanobots, it fills their body, yeah. they plump back up. Yeah, and because that's, so, how, that's how cum works. Because <laughs> <that's, laughs> yeah. you know, anytime you're not feeling yeah. good, just yeah. blast some more cum down your urethra, yeah. and then it'll just but it'll like, bring it back to life. And then they're like, must make windows I don't know, D11 or whatever the fuck they're doing now. Yeah. And then they just work like a slave. Exactly. Then you just like... And it also takes an Intel off the streets. Yep. And then we might get better at Microsoft products because robots are controlling them rather than their uh, sadness that they can't get a girl that they want to molest. Just a bunch of nano cum butts will save the the world with the husk of... I was thinking of uh, like Overlord where they were using like the dead bodies to, you know, essentially uh, make into super soldiers and be like, they, now they have purpose. Yeah. Uh, granted, those were Nazis doing that, so not the greatest thing. I would but, you know. the rest of the show literally just coming up with incel scenarios. Let's like, do it. Like going down, like uh, checking out, you know, they're like, ah, here's your, uh, here's your Virginia Slims. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your uh, package of dry macaroni. Here's your uh, yeah. one corner cup. So yeah. you're eating, hey. eating alone tonight, huh? Oh yeah, I, I noticed. I, I noticed that. Oh yeah. Oh god, one corner of the cup. One, like, yeah. <laughs> one twenty cent corner of the and, cup. And here's the thing. I, I eat alone all the time. I'm buying more than one corner of the cup. <laughs> yeah, just, I, I make it look like I make it look like I have somebody no, who loves you're me. You're buying <laughs> one. Yeah. yeah, you're like you're just like I'll be back tomorrow. And they're like, well, I noticed you don't have any butter or uh, milk for that uh, macaroni cheese. I eat it dry. I yeah. like my dry mac and cheese. It's just the powder, a little like they just eat it like cereal. Yeah. Well, your uh, your bill's five. Oh, five like my inches. What? Wait. When I'm hard. You know, I'm a, I'm a solid one saw five hard. Yeah. Why are why five dollars? Just just yeah. just straight also, five dollars. Also like like it's it's that's not like that's anything, not how you hit that, on people. That, that's, that's, that's also not, not how you a, hit on people. That's not a number to be either ashamed of or proud of. You just literally talked about like an average size penis. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know which way I'm supposed to take this because I can't feel it, like uh, yeah, are like, you are you bragging? Do you feel ashamed? Sympathy for you because you're not saying like, oh, my three inch penis, and now I have to feel bad for you. Yeah, you you're you're also you saying my nine middle penis. ground. Yeah, like, yeah, you're like that's pretty much talking about average size penis here. Yeah. You're so, like, so whatever. Oh, oh, me and my rock hard six inches. <laughs> okay, no, that's right. good. That's, that's good. That's, that's, that's proud of you, but that's yeah. also sexual harassment. Yes. Can you take your single quarter cob and yeah. shove it right up your ass? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was planning on it. <laughs> Yeah. That's uh, what I'm going to do. I have the suck machine on my dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, got a, I got the suck machine, put the corn and the cob up my ass, uh, chug my dry macaroni, and call it a night. And me and uh, Food for Thought are going to have a fucking hell of a night. Food for Thought. I like that. That Possibly, might be the title of the show, by the way. I, it's Got to spell it the right it, way, though. T-H-O-T. Uh, of course, of course. Well, in capitalized, it's an acronym at that point. It's yeah. a, for people who don't know, that is an incel term, primarily that hoe over there, right? So. Yeah, well, I've I've actually heard it used by pretty much everyone at this point. It, no, no, it, no, it, 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 cracked, it is it, it cracked, cracked out of yes, but, but it was but it was uh, essentially it, it maybe even started on like the uh, which is sort of an which like is the, what uh, they don't the, get because like blue you pill see a hot girl What's... and someone goes look at that thought and I'm like well I understand what you're saying you just say look at that hot girl over there I guess yeah. it's, I guess shortening things is easier but I don't know maybe it's just us being old. Maybe we're not getting the youth culture. Well, no, but the thing is, it definitely started as like... Uh, I'm going to call the next girl I see a thought and see what happens. It started as a very negative thing. I'm and, married. And I, I shouldn't and I, do and that. I do, and I do think some people have tried to like reclaim it, which I think is, is actually 
Reclaiming is the easiest way to take down Honestly, something. Honestly, yeah, because if you're like, oh, cool, that hole over there, and you can be like, Let, let's own that and call ourselves that, just like they, you know, Meredith Brooks helped take back bitch in the 90s and all that kind of stuff. Although you, huh, I still will yeah. not say bitch to anybody. I still, that is, I feel like I would probably use cunt before a bitch. Bitch is a terrible one. Uh, I bitch about things, and I guess oh, that I, I would say bitch. I, I say somebody being it bitchy. Has the same connotation, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, I don't care about any of that. I just say what I want to say. Yeah. Well, but 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 I, I we're, get, we're I conscious get enough to where like we're well, not I'm very yeah. conscious of yeah. it. We're I not, just but, but we're also not woke. You know. Well, I'm I, I know what woke is. Quote, unquote, I, woke. When I say I, I, I say air quote woke. In other words, we're pro, like socially progressive. I'm progressive, and, mindful and of what I consider myself woke. But at the same time, I'll I will. I will say a lot of bad words. Yes. I just, I just well, use context. Well, because guess what? Context is a real I use thing. use context. Isn't that crazy that people can have context and there's nothing has just a black and white like value? Yep. Unless you're black, in which case you're black and you're white and you're white because there's no shades of gray in there. Obama. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was a half half black, half white. <laughs> what were you, you, you? Moving on. <laughs> he was a half black, half white. You paused. You paused. What was I going to say? I did that thing that I had a very bad friend who said once, and I know. <laughs> I can, I, know. can I say it? Because my friend said it, and I didn't. I heard him say it. This was back when Obama was president. And he didn't like okay, him. Okay, okay. He called him an African. Oh no, I never thought about that. Actually, and I, I that's always stuck in my brain. I've never used it I'm outside actually, of I've this context. I've, I've actually literally never heard that. I actually think that was cleverer than what I said. Uh, well, it's half, clever, but well, he used yeah. it in a racist way. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing. it's stuck in my brain. If and you're I was half just black, like, if you're half black and half white, if you have like you know like his father being like. African mother being uh, Hawaiian, I think. What, was that what it was? Yeah, or, or yeah, American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. American anyway, yeah, like white. Yeah. Um, and when that happens, uh, it was at, a at the same time, term, if, if you're if you're still like have a black complexion, you live the black experience. So he was a yes. black guy. Yes. yes. So yes, people would be like, "Well, half yeah, white." I'm like, "Yeah, he lived the black experience." People aren't uh, people are racists aren't getting that granular about things like, "Let me see your 23 and me break out." Although uh-huh, we, are, although, uh-huh, uh-huh. although, oh shit, although there's as, some Scottish in there. You're good. As a white Anglo male, uh, cis male, I probably yes. shouldn't say this, but within black culture, there is a bit of divisiveness oh, about with, with, uh, light skin, dark skin. With, with yes, with, within their own culture, but I'm yeah. talking like the straight, like as far as, far as, as it, 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 it comes as far from as pop the, culture, yes. actually, where they feel like a lot of uh, black women cast in movies as the sexy lead lady uh, often are of lighter complexion, yeah, like the, thus uh, are closer to I white than of? black. Like Ang- Angela Bassett, like those kind of... Is that what I'm thinking of? Or she, yeah, I yeah. don't have a great example in my head. Maybe... Uh, uh, Alicia Keys, you know? There, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that going yeah, on where they're Angela like, well... Bassett, you know, like she's... she's yeah, she, sure. Well, because she was like a lead in a lot, but like she's clearly a black, black woman, but not like... Uh, but luckily we have good yeah. uh, filmmakers nowadays. Like Jordan Peele's a great example. He casts people who are of color who just... It doesn't matter if they're light or dark. He's casting good people in yes, good yeah. roles. Well, he, well, he's, and, he's and also he, he's also uh, like him and uh, and um, uh, Keegan Michael Key. Yeah, there we go. Or we're, we're both uh, half black, half white. Like they they yeah. have mixed race. Uh, but the way they cast yes. their movies, they're doing it along uh, what would be considered. Um, Correct race line, yes, if you will. They're well, not. Yeah, well, they're not, you, they're you, not casting all light skinned people or yes. all dark. They're, well, and, they're doing. And, and, uh, yeah, they're casting also, as the country is a, and, and a broad and, general color. Yeah, and generally, scheme. like his, like the lead, like people gave uh, Jordan Peele recently, like some well, people. Uh, uh, Incels, white white racist, uh, like white generally, like, got, like when people who feel victimized for being white and that like their whole like lifestyle is being taken away. Piece of um, shit. Yep. They 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 came down on him because he said he he was like I don't see myself casting uh, white leads in a movie, and I'm like. That because he's like writing for his own experience and things like that, and I'm like, that's fucking fine. Like that, that's that's okay for yeah, you to but, say. But if you had, he's, like, he's not saying, but if you had Quentin Tarantino say yeah. the exact opposite as a white guy, oh, people course. would fucking yeah, kill no, him. Of course, that would be the uh, the opposite. Uh, uh, but he was he was also saying he, it's not like he's saying I will not do that. He's just like I don't see myself writing a story where that would be where I would be writing yeah, a white no, experience. He's just writing from his own experience. Yeah, so so he's like I, he might he might write like a mixed race experience, something along those lines, like whatever. But and also uh, you know us was definitely more of the poor slash rich. That was definitely the yeah. uh, the more of that. Uh, element of yeah uh, yeah. So if I sat yeah. down tonight, it was classist. If not, I, it was literally all about race. Yeah. It was about class. Yeah. If I sat down tonight and wrote a movie, it would not be in the experience of a Latino. It would not be in the experience of a black person. First of all, I it would, just wouldn't. I would, I, and, and if I wanted somebody, you know what? I don't know their experience. No. And if I wanted somebody, if I wanted some element of their experience in my story as as, as a part of it, I would talk to somebody who knew what experience. I wouldn't be like, ah, I'm going to assume I know what it's like to be yeah. a and then, to then be they, a, a Latin American male. Uh, or female, a single mother in the inner city. 
Yeah. Who who's uh, uh well, LA who's has a lot undocumented. of smog. Yeah. Better get back to the churro cart. Yeah, you just don't <laughs> yeah, you no, literally I don't. wouldn't even I wouldn't even write a movie about LA. I don't know that experience. Nope. Let alone fucking like I wouldn't write an experience about being a white person in LA, let alone, you know. Uh so And that's also a big issue with cinema in general right now, is like people say like, Well, there's all these movies written by white people with all these white people and it's like well, yeah, like, say you lived in Vermont your entire yeah. life, and you're writing a movie about your childhood in Vermont. We've already talked about this yes, once yeah. the show. You're, you're going to write about your childhood in Vermont yeah. with a bunch of white yeah. kids. And, and maybe, and maybe like, a, like the, the and, one and, yeah. black kid you what? had in your class, because I hate to say it, you and I that, grew up in literally, that kind of time. Literally, like, yeah, when people are like, I have a couple of black friends because we come from that kind yeah, of society. It's not like and, I, it's not like you're racist. Yeah. You literally made friends with if all of them yeah. because there were two. And if you're writing if you're writing them, truth. I, that sounds weird when I use pronouns, but it's yeah. it's No, but if, if you're if you're writing if you're writing truth and and your experience, like if suddenly I just made a movie about Vermont and there's like it's 60% black, that's lying. Like yeah, we're that's a not white the, culture. That's yeah. not the experience. Yeah. Unless, yeah. unless you were writing as a black writer who yes, lived in yes, Vermont exactly amongst a experience. small yes. knit community. But there, cuz there's a there's there are a lot of like uh, um, uh, there's a lot of refugee communities in uh, around Vermont, especially. Yeah, in, in you Burlington. can do a story within so Vermont there's, from a refugee yeah. experience if you were a refugee like, and uh, talk Winu about Winooski, that. Winooski, there's a like a big refugee community. Yeah. So there's like there's a part of Winooski which is just like suddenly like it probably has seventy percent of the black people in the state of Vermont in this one little yeah. one mile stretch you because it was a refugee. That. Yeah. And you fr you're from that experience, or even yes. you could actually technically be white if you maybe like help set it up or brought the people yeah, in. Yeah. As long if as you, you were, don't write if a, you were a standard white savior thing of like, I did it all myself. I saved <laughs> all the Jamaicans. Wait, they I weren't even refugees. I grabbed my staff and I parted the pine trees. <laughs> <laughs> they like yeah. Yeah. through the mountains. Let they your all part. people go. Yeah. My people are fine, but let your people go. <laughs> That'll be okay. Also, I'm definitely reappropriating Jewish from here. Yes, that's fine. Moses. Well, we a... tried some fine lines in the show, but yeah, we, uh, we definitely, uh, I, I think what we basically said was... I like black people. Well, no, we like all people. We hate incels. We hate white supremacists. We hate Nazis. And if you want to write about your experience, do it. And don't let someone shit on you, even well, if it's and, an all-white experience, because yeah. you can also have an all-black experience. And, 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 I, think, and, and I think one of, the, one of the issues, don't demonize the people running the experience. Maybe take a look at why there are so many of those people that are like, yeah, in other words, try to get more people of color into making movies so exactly. we can have more That's of that. That's the biggest don't problem. Don't try to get more white people to write the black experience. No. Like, I don't want that anyway. It's institutionalized yeah. white writing in Hollywood. Let's get more you like, more people yeah. of color yeah, in thing, Hollywood yeah, writing. More people of color, more women, especially we we're, and we women. come from like a horror life and background. I'm glad that like wait like today compared to like the 80s, uh, let alone before then, like the number of, of women making horror movies is awesome. And like because I like knowing what scares different people, like groups of people, more than I like knowing. I know what scares myself. But I like honestly, seeing what like I like different women are horror freaks movies. about horror movies too. Like they actually like watching them almost more yes. than guys sometimes. So that, I would they, think no, the experience that, of writing them. They were saying they were saying like well like fifty five percent of like the people who go to like theaters to watch like horror movies. Women. It also and, and eighty and eighty percent of people broadcast. who yeah eighty percent yeah. of like the true crime uh, listeners um a, a, a new hire uh, who's now like one of my favorite people at our office. Came in today. She had a "Hail Yourself" last podcast on oh, the T-shirt yes. on, and I was like, "You're the fucking coolest!" Like immediately was like, yes. th Suddenly you're just like somebody's branded as cool because I'm like, okay, no, you've got a women have a unique like uh, that, yeah. interaction and experience with horror, and I think it might uh, a part of it might be the fact that they live in a society where danger is much more prevalent I, for I them was, than you or I. I was thinking have about Have you that. ever walked down the street and worried about getting raped? No, he, no, honestly, and, and not, not I that. never have but, once but in I'm, my life. I'm actually conscious on the other side of that, where like I I was walking during the daytime and I noticed and you were like thinking I, about raping and people. I was, just, I was just like rape, <laughs> rape. I was singing my rape song. <laughs> this girl down the street. I'm like, why is she looking at me weird? No, but uh, rapes, 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 Definitely grasping wow. at straws. I'm really yeah. Well, you're definitely you're definitely raping at straws there. Uh, <laughs> no, but I was always so walking behind this like uh, like attractive woman going to, like uh, she was uh, I she was working at a uh, a restaurant or something. So she was like you know a, attractive uh, server walking toward. But I, and I was walking behind her. I'm like I even though it's during the day, I'm very conscious of like if I cross the street and just walk on the other side of the street, she'll probably feel more comfortable. Like if she's aware of a like a strange dude. Following her in like a relatively like unpopulated area, she might be worried, and that's I'm not that I'm not gonna do anything, but like I don't want her to have to like think like if oh suddenly, I walk faster it, with yeah. harder steps and try to get them a thicker yeah. skin. <laughs> <laughs> I figure if I thicken their skin up enough, they'll get less worried over time. Yeah. Like yeah. oh that yeah. guy was super creepy, but nothing happened. Yeah yeah, and then yeah no, just out strolling for rapes. 
<laughs> and then, yeah. And then you don't, and you're like, huh. See? What, what, or what, you get maced and you fucking deserve it. What I like it. to yeah. do is walk out with an increased pace to you catch up with him. Overtake them, and just as you pass, look over, smile, and be like, not gonna rape you. Yeah. And just keep yeah. walking. That's right. Male savior. Yeah. No, that's not how you do it. But no, uh, please that don't do is that. the uh, female experience versus the male, which is why horror movies through a women's lens, if you will, My fa- uh, absolutely. is a totally unique experience that we're just now in the last probably ten years getting to find. We're, we're, we're getting some like amazing uh, stuff out of, there. Like, some, um, uh, there. There's a new uh, uh, Jennifer Kent uh, is coming out with uh, the Nightingale, supposed to be like one of the most brutal movies out there. Raw. Oh, I read Raw. all about that. Yep, Raw. Raw is my favorite like horror yeah. movie, probably of. It's definitely got to stay in my top five yeah. forever. Like it, it is. It was my favorite horror movie in the past, probably five, ten years, easily. Yep. Um, Nightingale's getting yeah. a lot of a uh, that's supposed bad like, criticism too. Yes, but, but at the same time, so, but I just heard it's like fucking brutal. So, yeah. like, which is funny because Babadook was not brutal. It was very like uh, uh, anything, psychological. Anything you know? she makes, I'm down for. I don't care exactly, how brutal yep. it is. Exactly. I, I, I like the fact that she can go that way. But all uh, right, it's supposed looks to be like, like a, a revenge kind of thing. But uh, yeah, like we just spent the last 15 minutes talking about movies and women as creators and race and incels. And I think it was like it was a fast two like, white men. We came out on top. <laughs> yes, we, <laughs> as we often do, especially when raping. Um, no kidding. Uh, but we were trying to backpedal the whole way through, and we just fucked that up. So right, we're just gonna so, say uh, uh, get lost. Get lost. Mm-hmm. 